Okay, I'm going to demonstrate now the central limit theorem. So I've written some code for my favorite statistical software R, and we're going to use this to see the central limit theorem in action. Okay, so what I've just done here is simulated a sample of 30 observations from this uniform distribution. So this red rectangle is a probability distribution called the uniform and basically we're generating a random number on the interval 0 1 and you can see I've put them in order here rounded to two decimal places and so these are the first eight observations <coughs> um, we expect in each of these histogram bars 20% or, or six observations in each here we've got a few more and that's why the bar sits above um, fewer observations than we'd expect in the next interval exactly as many as we'd expect between 0.4 and 0.6 a few more than we'd expect here and a few less than we'd expect here so the histogram um, we can see has a fairly different appearance to the red um, population the blue line here is drawn at the sample mean of these 30 numbers uh, so that's the average of them now let me draw another sample there we go and we saw two things happen well three the numbers changed here the appearance of the histogram changed and the position of the blue line changed so watch whichever one of these you like in a time um, so the numbers changing the shape of the histogram changing and the position of the blue line changing Okay, so every time I generate a new sample, those three things, basically the numbers, the graph of them, and the sample mean of them change. Um, the sample mean then, because that's changing, we can conclude that is a random variable. And we might be interested in what is the distribution of that random variable. So what is the distribution of the sample mean? As we change the samples, it changes so it is a random variable, and we need to understand that. So, let me speed up this process, and I'm going to do that sampling process over again. I'm going to store up those blue values and I'm going to draw a histogram of those. So, let me trigger that. Okay, so what we can see happening here um, up in the title with how many samples I've, I've generated and you can see the blue line dancing around the place that's exactly the same process as before um, the sample which we're not seeing this time is drawn the sample mean is calculated and the blue line is plotted at that sample mean the histogram that you can see um, sort of building up in the background is the histogram of those blue positions so those are the sample means and I'm collecting them and I'm drawing a histogram of them and you can see them sort of falling into place and stacking up um, very rarely the blue line is, is jumping out of the, the interval in the middle 0.4 to 0.6 so most of the time it's in the middle every so often um, it's beyond those two numbers and that's why we can see this peak in the center of the distribution the red line is a normal distribution curve and that's drawn with the same mean as the uniform distribution 0.5 and a standard deviation based on the theoretical standard deviation of that uniform distribution which we don't need to worry about here the important thing is that we see that the normal curve the red line and the histogram um, have a very very similar shape now there's no good reason no obvious reason why the histogram should have that that normal shape but the the actual reason for it is the result called the central limit theorem that says the sample mean of a large sample will be approximately normally distributed irrespective of the shape of the original population so imagine that rectangle 
not at all normal, yet here we see a normal sample mean.